Hi, welcome to Stitchity Doo Doll. In today's episode, I have three finished objects and two new active whips. I hope you stick around and keep watching. And if you don't want to stick around for the fluff and stuff, down below in the description box, I include chapters where you can easily navigate throughout the video. So let's get started. I just want to clarify when I say fluff and stuff, I don't mean anything bad against chit chatty um, podcast videos. I personally love and I binge on chit chatty podcast videos. I search them out <laughs> and I subscribe to them. Like I like the chit chatty podcast videos. That's what I watch. That's what I enjoy. I play it in the background while I'm crocheting. I play it in the background while I'm washing dishes. <laughs> I play it in the background even when the TV's on. I mean, I've got YouTube basically on every chance that I got. So um, I just want to clarify when I say fluff and stuff, I don't mean anything negative against uh, chit chatty podcasts. So, but if you don't want to stick around for the chit chat, you know, just know that you have options. Hi, I am Gail, the creator behind this channel. And if you've been here before, I do not have my sidekick Nicole here with me today. And she is very bummed, but our weekend was very busy and we couldn't get around to filming. So I had to film Solo Mio today, Monday, and the show must go on. <laughs> This week, I am wrapping up my minis to send over to Crystal from Chronically Crocheting here on YouTube. And the reason why we are working so hard on making minis is because she wants to become the yarn fairy this year for Halloween. She's visiting family abroad and her grandkids had asked her, Grandma, what do you want to be for Halloween this year? And she had this grandiose idea that wouldn't it be nice if she could be a yarn fairy? So she has a whole costume planned out and her vision is to have like a messenger bag filled with mini amigurumis and she would have a wand and she would just have her hand out and magically boop, have mini amigurumis for her little trick-or-treaters instead of treats. But the problem with this is that Crystal suffers from multiple chronic illnesses. And so Kayla from Mama, Mama Lama Kayla had put out a call to all crocheters to help out and help Crystal create mini amigurumi so that we can help her dream come true of becoming a yarn fairy this year for Halloween. So for the past, um, month and a half i've been working really hard at trying to crank out mini amigurumis as many as i could fit in um, a medium size usps flat rate box and so i'm nearing the top and so i have to wrap it up and call it done soon and um two of these finished objects are just for that and whatever else can fit in there um probably a card and maybe a little surprise for crystal uh, and then I'm just going to wrap it up and uh, send it off to Crystal. And if you want to watch all of the mini amigurumis, um, I'll have you click on over to Crystal's channel because she does Yarn Fairy Fridays and she goes over all of the, all of the minis that she receives for um, Yarn Fairy on Fridays. And you can go check it out there and see what I created for her. My first finished object is... So this is actually Crystal's, um, Crystal's pattern, and it was originally a monster, not a minion. And then um, maybe like a week later, I believe, she came out with a modification where you could use her same existing monster pattern and um, do some easy um, color changes and modifications to make it into a minion. And I thought, what a great idea. I already made one minion and I wanted to make one that was no so. So that is um, the best part about this pattern is that it's no so. And I love the way that it came out. So I just followed Crystal's instructions on how to change the original pattern into a minion. 
So again, this pattern is done by Crystal at Chronically Crocheting here on YouTube. I used Lion Brand Basic Stitch for weight yarn in Royal Blue, Lemonade, and Black. And I also used some scrap yarn for the goggles. I used a 3.5 millimeter hook and nine millimeter safety eyes. With the 3.5 millimeter hook and four weight yarn, this minion came out to be two and a half inches tall. I also used felt around the safety eye and Beacon's Fabri-Tac glue to kind of secure it on there. And as for my modifications, I did not do the increase in row 12, nor the decrease in row 13. Instead, I just kept going on straight down because I that would have done like a little bit of a flare. So she did four decreases. Uh, the only difference is I distributed the decreases evenly across that row instead of for consecutive uh, decreases in that row, I spread them out evenly. Um, also for the straps, um, I ended up chaining seven. I forget what her pattern says, but I just um, sh I just chained up until however long I thought looked good. And then um, for the color change for the goggles, I hid the color change under the eye slash goggles so that um, the change wasn't noticeable. So yeah, that's a, a tip. If you, if you have a color change and it's not looking good and you have some kind of embellishment that's going to go somewhere around on that row anyway, might as well just hide that color change under here. And look, it looks seamless. You can't tell because it's underneath the eye and you can't see it. My second finished object is... <laughs> if I'm gonna make a regular minion, I might as well try a purple minion. And the, the changes to go from a regular minion to a purple one is very minimal. So um, it's just a matter of color changes. So instead of blue, black, and yellow, I'm just using straight up purple and black. Um, so black for the trousers or whatever you call this, dungarees or whatever. Um, so black for his overalls, his overalls and the, um, the goggle strap, and then just purple for his body. And then the only difference is his arms I made long because um, if you look it up, they have kind of long and long lanky arms and they kind of drag on the ground. And it's kind of, it's kind of like this. It's a little derpy, weird looking. And so it works out to be perfect. And then I also um, shortened his legs, same thing as this little guy. And um, also his hair. So this minion doesn't have any hair, but this guy does. And so what I did was I just um, looped yarn up here and um, threaded it through the loop, like latch hook type. And um, so I, I forget how long I did. I just kind of measured it out, folded it in half and um, kind of estimated how long I wanted the hair to be. So I made it longer than what I thought because I knew that I was going to brush it out. And so I used a pet hair brush um, to brush out the yarn. So this is made from yarn. This is not a wool felt or anything. This is actual like regular acrylic yarn, not this brand, but um, uh, this this one I whatever acrylic yarn that I use for this um, I just looped it on here grabbed my pet brush and I just brushed it out like how you would normally brush your own hair and it creates this fuzzy fuzzy look and then I was telling Nico oh I'm gonna use your um your hair straightener because she has a hair straightener in her her bathroom that she commandeered from me I no longer use it so I just gave it to her I said, I'm going to use your flat iron so I can straighten out his hair. And she goes, why? His his hair, that's how the hair looks. And I was like, 
are you sure? And she's like, yeah. So I looked it up and sure enough, their hair is like, it's just wacky. I, it wasn't straight. It was kind of just crazy, crazy. And so this is exactly how it turned out. And it looks just like, I'm super happy with how it came out. And so for this little guy, again, it's still the same pattern from Crystal at Chronically Crocheting here on YouTube. And for this one, I use Lion Brand Basic Stitch, which is a four weight yarn in black and Premier Everyday Worsted uh, in violet. I use a 3.5 millimeter hook and nine millimeter eyes, safety eyes. And with a 3.5 millimeter hook and a four weight yarn, he came out to be two and a half inches tall. I also used white felt for his eyes and the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. And same thing with the regular Minion. Um, I did the same modifications. I didn't do rows 12 and 13 as stated in her pattern. I didn't do an increase nor a decrease. I just um, crocheted the same amount of stitches from row 11 all the way down to uh, row 13. And I just continued onto row 14 as stated according to her pattern. Um, I made the arms longer. I think I did 11 chains and then 10 single crochets back down onto the chain. And I made the, the legs short, just like um, this one. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the arms are just as long as the legs. And then um, again, I distributed the decreases at the very end evenly straps were the same i changed seven and then i just hid the um, color change for the goggles underneath the eye so you can't tell the color change there so i'm super happy he looks crazy in the next coming weeks i will be focusing my efforts or my crochet efforts on a new to me charity I learned of this charity from Rose, from Rose Likes Crochet here on YouTube. And um, she, do she donates a lot of crochet items to her local charity called Wings in the Chicago area. And I know a lot of you know who she is and you yourself donate to her and for the Wings cause. And the Wings slogan is, breaking the cycle of domestic violence. And I thought that was a great cause to donate to. And their donation request for next month, October is baby lovies. And I made um, a baby lovey previously and I loved the way that it came out. And so I thought that I join in on the fun. Which brings me to my third finished object. And it's this cute Theo the teddy bear lovey and he comes out of this book snuggle and play crochet and it is written by carolina guzman benitez now for this pattern i used i love this cotton in antique gold and yarn b sugar wheel cotton in the colorway zest wishes which is a discontinued yarn cake now, I Love This Cotton is a four weight yarn and Yarn B Sugar Wheel Cotton is a three weight yarn. I used the five millimeter hook on the lovey portion and a 3.5 millimeter hook for the amigurumi head and arms portion. I used 12 millimeter safety eyes and with the 3.5 millimeter and five millimeter hooks with a four and three weight yarns, this lovey came out to be approximately 14 and a half inches in diameter. So if I were to spread this out from wingspan to wingspan, it comes out to approximately 14 and a half inches in diameter. And then if I measure it from the top of the ear to the bottom of the lovey like this, he measures out to be 10 and a half inches tall. Now for the lovey, I did do con color control. I also didn't like the shaping of the head for the original pattern. It kind of reminds me of a balloon where it's bigger at the top and tapers towards the bottom. So if you look here in the book, his head looks 
like a balloon and I didn't care for that shape and so I just modified the pattern so that all of the increases are located at the very top and then I just do my um, regular stitches just neither increasing nor decreasing rows here like building up rows and then all of my decreases are all down here so it's increases regular and decreases i didn't spread them out in any way because i like the shaping of uh this style of uh spheres and so that's what i did with the head I did use her um, number of stitches. I just located them differently. I did create my own shaped arms. I didn't like the shape of the arms. Um, they're kind of big, fat, and stubby. <laughs> and I wanted them a little more dainty looking. And so I basically went rogue and created my own pattern. And it's, if you've ever done amigurumi before, it's kind of similar to, um, legs where uh you kind of have a bigger bottom and then the the skinnier leg and kind of like a toe area so this would be like the toe area if you know what i mean so that's basically kind of what i did so if you look at the shaping of the arm um that's what i did so i did two of those and gave it that kind of a look I also added whites to the eyes and I love the way that it came out. She, uh, it kind of looks like innocent, like, mm, I didn't do it, <laughs> wasn't me. So I really love this. It gives it that, that innocent look. For the arms, I forgot to do the color change. So you're supposed to do color changes towards the upper part of the arms. Um, and. I wasn't paying attention to the pattern and I just did it all in skin color, which I don't mind, but um, if you're gonna follow the pattern, it does make you do color changes so that it matches the lovey. So it looks like sleeves and this is a dress kind of a look, but um, I'm okay with how it came out without the color change. I, you know, it happens. So when I sewed on the head onto the lovey, um, I really wanted to make sure that it was secure on there. So I stitched it around once and then went around again a second time and I stitched it twice. So because I know that this is um, going to go to a little one and it's going to be loved and dragged all over the place, I really wanted to make sure that the, um, the head is secured onto the body. Oh, the lovey. <laughs> In the pattern, Carolina has you sew on the arms onto the blanket. And I I actually did that for my very first lovey when I, I followed her pattern. And I thought that it was kind of flimsy, like I didn't like the feel of it. And so this time around for my second attempt, I actually attached it directly onto the head not the lovey and I like it much better. I can dangle it like this and feel secure that it's not going to go anywhere. When I did the same test with the lovey, um, I didn't like it. I wasn't happy and I knew that I wasn't going to do that again. And so, yeah, I would recommend if you're going to follow, um, her pattern that you too also um, attach the arms onto the head as opposed to the the lovey because the lovey is more loosely stitched because it uses you know taller stitches it's not single single crochet stitches um, they are taller stitches and I won't tell you exactly what stitch but it is a taller stitch than a single crochet and so it's more loosely woven and because of that I just wasn't um, confident enough to stitch the arms directly onto the lovey. I also wet blocked the lovey before I attached the body onto the lovey. It made it so much more nicer of a drape and it just brought the lovey together. It's like a shirt. <laughs> um, you can wear a frumpy, well I wear frumpy wrinkled shirts and I'm okay with that but <laughs> for my loveys I'm not liking the wrinkled look, so I prefer to wet block. I wet block mine. Um, I did not 
soak it in water. What I did was I laid it onto my blocking mat and um, I spritzed it with water because when I soak it in water and I have to squeeze it out, I don't like the idea of smashing the yarn. And so um, for the lovey, I would rather just lay it onto the blocking mat spritz it with some water and I just patted it down to make sure that it was soaking up the water and I would spritz it multiple times until I knew it was drenched um, and then I flipped it over I did both sides and I just pinned it into place like how I wanted it and um, I let it dry overnight and it has this just beautiful drape and I love this um, I believe it's a hundred percent cotton Yes, it's 100% three-weight cotton, and I love the drape of it. It's so soft. It's so drapey. Um, I love this lovey, <laughs> and I'm sure that any baby who gets this will love it too. For the edging, I did... Um, she calls for the crab stitch, and I had a difficult time at first. Um my stitches because i'm not used to doing the crab stitch i've only done it once before and it was my first lovey and um i don't remember how difficult of a time i had that time around but this time around when i started it i noticed that my crab stitches were inconsistent and so before actually continuing on to the edging i kind of practiced so I practiced a few and then I ripped it out and I practiced again and I ripped it out and I kind of just looked back and forwards of the stitch to see exactly what it was that I was doing to make the crab stitch look the way that it looks. And so once I figured that out, um, I played with tension and placement of the yarn as I did the stitch. And once I figured it out, um, I had a better uh, stitch consistency. It was more consistent after I figured out what the heck I was doing and what the crab stitch was all about. And so if you're not used to the crab stitch, I would recommend that you do the same where you just kind of practice first. Um, unless you're okay with just, you know, going all the way around and that being your practice, that's totally fine too. But, um, I did a little practice run back and forth in one particular area before I continued on. Also, sewing in the ends, I had a difficult time. So with my color changes and color control here on the lovey, I had a difficult time with um, sewing in the ends. For Amigurumi, because you do a lot of tight stitching with single crochets, um, it's easy to sew in your ends it can, because it's so tight, you don't have to worry about it coming undone or loosening up um, as much as you do with looser stitches like this lovey. It's very airy, open, and lacy. And the way that I'm used to sewing in ends, I actually go underneath stitches. I mean, I go through the stitches, but I don't split my stitches in the sense that I'm not splitting the yarn. I actually, I split the stitch, but I don't split the yarn, if that makes sense. And because of that, and I try to go in a zigzag pattern, and I kept a long tail so that I could um, weave it in and out without it coming undone, but my ends are still popping out like here for instance this little fuzzy bit here that's a yarn end that's popping out and i don't like that it's popping out here and there and i'm just not happy with it but um i did hear um crystal from the secret yarnery mention in one of her recent videos i forget which video it was but she had mentioned that um, for weaving in ends, she prefers um, sharper needles. And that's so that she can split her stitches and split her yarns. And I know she does a lot of blankets. And 
I was like, maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to use, instead of a blunt tapestry needle like I normally use for my amigurumis, I actually use both. I use a, a blunt one and I use a sharper one. Like this is a tapestry needle too, but it's a little sharper and thinner. Um, maybe I need to do that just for uh, weaving in ends during this lovey portion, just so that I can split the yarn. Because I feel like if I were to split the stitches and the yarn, I feel like maybe the yarn will stay put and not come undone um, like it is right now. Like, see, you can see it. It's, see it popping out? I'm like, I'm not happy with that. I don't like that. And so um, I'm not gonna redo it, but um, if I'm gonna remake more of these, I think that's um, the method that I'm gonna try next time around and see how it turns out. But if you have any suggestions for me as to how to weave in my ends during this lovey portion, the blanket portion, let me know down before below because um, I would love to hear um, any tips or tricks that you have um, so that your, your ends don't pop out like mine's are. That is it for my finished objects, but I still have two active, new active whips to share with you. And my first whip is my second lovey, actually third, but second for um, Rose at Rose Likes Crochet and the Wish Foundation or project, whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, so this is my second lovey for um, this month. And this, this character comes out of the same book written by Carolina Guzman Benitez. And the book title is snuggle and play crochet so for this lovey i used lamia baby cotton in colors l28 l43 l46 l42 l48 l39 and l40 i also used i love this cotton in colors amethyst dove and white um the i love this cotton is a four weight yarn and the lamia baby cotton is a three weight cotton acrylic blend yarn. I used a five millimeter hook for the lovey portion and a 3.5 millimeter hook for the amigurumi head and arms. So with the 3.5 millimeter hook and a five millimeter hook and the four and three weight yarns, it came out to be 14 and a half inches in diameter if I were to span the blanket out from end to end, it would be 14 and a half inches in diameter and 10 and a half inches tall if I measure from the top of the ears to the bottom of the blanket. Oh, I also used 12 millimeter safety eyes. So for this pattern, I did the arms according to pattern, unlike Theo, I went rogue and did my own arms. But this is the arms that's um, written in the book. And I did it according to pattern because Miko liked the arms. And so I decided, and she chose, she chose Liz the cat for my next project. And so I figured since she chose the cat, I'm going to do it according to what she liked. So I did the arms according to what the book said. But I did go rogue on the face. The original pattern has... Liz the cat face like this and um, I knew I wasn't going to put the eyes close like that. I knew that I wanted them uh, further apart and so I ended up looking up cat faces online and I found one that kind of looks like this. I'm not sure how I'm liking this. I'm not sure if I should go with black instead of pink. Let me know what you think. I'm kind of on the fence about this. I haven't put in the whites under the eyes yet, but I'd like to do that. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna give it the um, the eyebrows that uh, the book has it in. But I do like the color changes um, that I decided on. And so I don't have any more of the Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton. Um, that is my favorite yarn to use for this lovey. It's so soft. It's so pretty. I love their color combinations, but 
uh, the last time that I went to Hobby Lobby, I couldn't find any. So I'm not sure if it's discontinued or not. Um, but yeah, I'd love to get my hands on more of those because I love the way that it works up in the lovey. But because I didn't have any more, I ended up looking um, in my own yarn stash to see what kind of three-weight cotton yarns that I had. And so I ended up with the Lamia Baby Cotton yarns. And this is a little stiffer. It's not as drapey as the uh, Hobby Lobby yarn, if you can tell. I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's a lot more... This is a lot more drapey and soft, and this is a little stiffer and rougher. Not that it's rough, but it's got that typical cotton yarn feel, more so than this one, because the Hobby Lobby cotton is such a soft cotton that it doesn't feel like your typical cotton yarn. It's just really soft and luxurious, which is why I love working with it. But, um, it still works out really nice for the lovey. It's just not as soft as the other one on Theo. When I um, finish it up, I'll give you more information. My second and last active whip is, <laughs> don't mind her hair. It's still in, it works in progress. <laughs> so um, this is uh, the Sanderson sister, Winifred Sanderson from Hocus Pocus. And I wanted to make one of these because I saw her on Crystal from Chronically Crocheting's channel and she had made one of her. And I saw it and I was like, I've got to make them, all of them. And um, this pattern is by the Crochet Queen Designs and she has a website and I'll have everything linked below. For this pattern, I use Premier Everyday Worsted in Violet, Christmas green and cream and Lion Brand basic stitch in pumpkin. I use a 3.5 millimeter hook and nine millimeter safety eyes. And with the 3.5 millimeter hook and four weight yarns, she came out to be approximately five inches tall. Now she is not finished yet. I still need to attach more of her hair strands. As you can tell by the backside, she's a little bald and she also needs to have that little lift of a hair um, at the very tippy top of her hair. Uh, but I think other than her hair, I think that might be it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. She needs arms. <laughs> so I need to finish up her hair and um, s s crochet and stitch up her arms. So, and then that'll be done. But um, yeah. Although I'm done with minis for Crystal from Chronically Crocheting, I'm still going to be making lots more minis in the coming upcoming weeks because my cousin reached out to me and she asked if I had any amigurumis to offload because um, I had a bunch of amigurumis, like I think 80 something, and they were just collecting. And I was telling them, you know, I don't know what to do with them. And um, during my last family reunion, um, I knew that there were going to be a lot of kids there. And so I brought a bunch of amigurumis that I had made. And I brought them in this big old box like Santa Claus. I mean, it wasn't anywhere near Christmas, but I brought it like ho, 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 like Santa Claus. I've got gifts and toys for all the kids. And um, just... So I brought it in to the area where we were all sitting and I just kind of discreetly, I was like, Psst. and I, I called out to one of my second cousins and I asked her, do you like dolls? And she's not used to me because she doesn't see me very often, but she's like looking at me like, who's this, who's this stranger talking to me? <laughs> and then I was like, do you like dolls? And she's looking at me like this and I said, I have dolls, you want one? And then she just kind of like stared at me like, what, you, what, what are you talking about? What you got? What, let me see. And so I busted open the box and lo and behold, there was like tons of amigurumi. I think I brought like maybe 20-ish amigurumi there and because I wanted at least enough for one per child. And we have we have a big family. <laughs> with plenty of kids. And so um, I made sure that I had enough. I brought more 
I, I wanted to be prepared and not have anybody feel left out. And so I brought more than I knew there were going to be kids. And so she stuck her head in and she started digging away and she started choosing. I said, pick one, you can keep one for yourself. And so I started one by one calling over the kids um, to say, hey, you, you guys want one? Come, come and look. And a funny story there are older women behind me and she sees this and um she's like maybe in her i don't know 60s and she's like what you got over there and i said oh it's uh toys for the kids and she goes you giving them away and i said yeah for the kids and then she goes can i have one and i was like oh no auntie it's for the kids and then so she backed off and then so I'm, you know, I'm trying to call all the kids, have them come over and choose a, a toy. And um, I didn't get to call all of them over. And there's still some that are straggling around and they didn't get a chance to choose one. And then um, so we're eating. And then again, the lady behind me, she's like, can I have one yet? And I said, no, auntie. <laughs> All the kids haven't chosen one yet. Oh, it's, it's for the it's for the kids, you know. Maybe after the kids are done, maybe then you can have. But before I could finish, <laughs> Auntie was already in the box digging away, and I was like, "Ah, what did I just didn't I just say that it was for the kids?" And so she's digging, and she happens to grab an amigurumi. And then there was another kid who was grabbing the same amigurumi and they were like, and I was thinking to myself, she better let go. <laughs> if she don't let go, something's going to happen. <laughs> she let go and I was like, okay. <laughs> Disturbance avoided. But I was just like, ah, you know, these toys are supposed to be for kids and I understand that I'm giving away things for free but honestly you're a grown woman <laughs> you know the reason why I brought it was for the kids and you know because I just said that not all of the kids had gotten one yet why are you wanting to compete with the kids <laughs> oh I tell you anyways <laughs> enough about my rent but um so anyways back to my cousin so she had asked me if I had any more amigurumi that I wanted to offload and so I I said I'd take a look and see and I have a few that I don't mind departing with because um her her kids school is having a function where they can have like little mini boutiques uh, set up and so she wants to sell um, some amigurumi uh, on her table so I was like oh, okay let me see if I have some and I have some but I was telling her and my amigurumis that I have are like around this size they're not lubbies they're actual amigurumis but um, I told her I said I think for like craft fairs and events of this nature I hear not that I've done it from experience but from all the YouTube videos that I've been watching, I've learned and I've assessed that mini amigurumis tend to do really well at craft fairs and little boutique pop-ups like, like how she's having at a, at a school. I said minis do really, really well at these events because um, parents give their kids like five bucks, you know, a few bucks to spend and choose something. And so because of that, um, they choose small and expensive things and that's why many amigurumis do well at events like this. So I told her I don't have any minis because all of them are going to crystal as you know. But um, I said if you want I can work on some minis and see if I can send them to you along with the other ones. And she says oh no no bother but you know it would be a great idea and I don't mind. So I said okay. Well, my current um, project is wrapping up and I've been making a, a bunch of minis. So I'm gonna continue on making minis for my cousin, but I'm not gonna be too concerned about the sizes of the minis anymore because I was trying to keep it within um, 
the palm size um, because I know that Crystal is going to be traveling and I didn't want to inconvenience her um, by uh, giving donating too big of an amigurumi so I was trying to keep it within this size so um, I think for my cousin I'm not going to be too concerned about it being like the size of my hand I, I may go a little bit bigger than that but not too much bigger because I still want it to be smaller so that they would you know sell better at her event but that's what I'm going to be working on in the next coming of weeks and so stay tuned for that if you want to um, see that so that's all that I have for you this week um, I do have one question for you folks. So I would like to know, and I am new here on YouTube. I'm really new, like green podcaster here on YouTube. And I'm not sure um, what kind of video content that you guys like. I mean, I have video content ideas um, written down for future um, videos. But my question to you is, do you like chatty podcast videos or do you like short and sweet uh podcast videos let me know down below because i'm curious and i'd like to um modify or adjust my podcast videos according to what i hear from feedback from you folks so let me know and until next video have a fun crafty week see ya